Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about phenytoin. What is this drug phenytoin? Phenytoin is one of the well-known and old generation anti-epileptic drug. A class of drugs commonly known as AEDs and among them phenytoin is one of the old generation anti-epileptic drug. Within the name of this drug we can observe the suffix toin. This toin indicates this drug belongs to hydantoin chemical category. So this is the hydantoin structure. So phenytoin is a hydantoin derivative. Among the anti-epileptic drugs we know other category of drugs like barbiturates. Among them phenobarbital is one of the important drug. But phenytoin is a hydantoin derivative with two phenyl rings at the fifth position. That's why phenytoin is a diphenyl hydantoin. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this phenytoin, how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects and clinical use of this drug we will discuss in this video. Phenytoin is one of the anti-epileptic agent. This drug is particularly used in the treatment of tonic-clonic seizures. Generalized tonic-clonic seizures are also called as grand mal epilepsy and this type of seizures include two phases. The first one is a tonic phase and second one is a clonic phase. Within the tonic phase, muscle stiffening can be observed along with cyanosis, blue discoloration because of lack of oxygen, tongue biting resembling a tongue filled with blood, unconsciousness. That's why tonic clonic seizures are classified as complex seizures resulting in the loss of consciousness. And epileptic cry is also observed in this tonic phase where the air is going to pass through the mouth producing a, a noise from the mouth. And after this tonic phase, clonic phase is going to be observed. And within this clonic phase, we can observe jerky movements, the repeated movements and legs and arms are undergoing a jerky repeated movements, eye blinking, salivary frothing, the saliva along with the air comes out of the mouth resulting in the formation of the froth in the patients. And after this tonic and clonic phase, micturition defecation occurs and the patient slowly recovers from this seizure attack. So phenytoin is one of the drugs that can be used in the treatment of tonic clonic seizures. Similarly, this drug is also useful in the treatment of psychomotor seizures. This is another type of seizures mainly including with loss of memory and within the patients we can observe few of the symptoms such as sudden fear or sudden euphoria, a state of joy and some strange odor or taste and decreased awareness and short term loss of memory can be observed. In such conditions again phenytoin is useful. In this way, phenytoin is useful in the tonic-clonic seizures as well as psychomotor epilepsy, but it is not useful in the absent seizures, which are mainly observed in the children. What is the chemical nature of this phenytoin? So this is the structure of phenytoin and here we can easily observe this ring system. This is nothing but hydantoin ring system. Now let us give the numbering. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So simply this hydantoin is having the two phenyl rings at the fifth position. But while we are writing the IUPAC name, this hydantoin is considered as imidazolidine derivative. So this imidazolidine is having the ketone groups at second and fourth position. So we can write this as 2,4 imidazolidine dione, which is attached with the phenyl rings at the fifth position. So 5,5 diphenyl. Phenytoin is a 5,5 diphenyl 2,4 imidazolidine dione. Now let us see how this phenytoin acts. Phenytoin mainly acts on the voltage gated sodium channels. So let us take the three states of voltage gated sodium channels. Through these voltage gated sodium channels, sodium can enter into the membrane and it can produce the depolarization. Under resting conditions, the membrane potential is around minus 70 millivolts. At this position, sodium cannot enter into the membrane because the sodium channels are closed. So this state of sodium channels are called as closed sodium channels. Now when an impulse reaches to the membrane, the membrane potential slowly raises and it can be converted from minus 70 millivolts to minus 60 millivolts, which is the threshold potential. At this threshold potential, 
the sodium channel activity is somewhat modified such that the gating is going to be open. This is the open state of the sodium channels. Now the sodium can enter into the membrane through this open state of voltage gated sodium channels. And as the sodium enters into the membrane, it increases the membrane potential and membrane potential may be raised up to plus 30 millivolts so that the membrane is going to be depolarized resulting in the stimulation of the membrane. In this way, the impulses are going to be propagated within the CNS due to the voltage gated sodium channels. And once this depolarization of the membrane is completed, the sodium channels cannot be converted into closed state. They should undergo another state which is the refractory state. Now the sodium channels can exist in a third state where the gating mechanism is still open but this is going to be closed such that they are in the inactive state. Now after the inactive state only the sodium channels can be converted into closed state. So in the inactive state of the sodium channels the sodium cannot enter through the channel because the channel is going to be closed at the inside of the membrane. Now phenytoin is one of the drug which shows the use dependence. It blocks the sodium channels which are excessively firing resulting in the seizure attack. So this drug can block the open state of sodium channels such that the sodium cannot enter into the membrane. And it also acts on the inactive state of the sodium channels such that these channels cannot be converted into closed state and they are reactivated. In this way, the phenytoin increases the inactive period of these voltage gated sodium channels, thereby reduce its firing, resulting in the decreased seizure attack. Now let us see the pharmacokinetics of phenytoin. Phenytoin is one of the drugs which is having the narrow therapeutic window. So the gap between the minimum effective concentration and minimum toxic concentration is very less in case of phenytoin. So around 10 to 20 milligram per liter is the therapeutic window for this phenytoin. So this drug should be carefully given and any sudden increase in the phenytoin levels may lead to its toxicity. Similarly, phenytoin is going to be metabolized by cytochrome P450 system and among them CYP2C9 as well as CYP2C19 are the two important enzymes. These enzymes may show some polymorphism in the patients. Because of their polymorphism, they are differently expressed in the different patients due to genetic variation so that the patient may not metabolize this drug in a similar way. So few of the patients act as fast metabolizers and few of the patients may act as slow metabolizers. So the levels of phenytoin are variable from patient to patient due to genetic variation. That's why the levels of phenytoin should be checked by radioimmune assay and the dose of the drug should be individualized based on the phenytoin levels in the patient. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of phenytoin is that this drug can induce one of the condition drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, DRESS. This is a collection of symptoms which is because of delayed type 4B hypersensitive reaction and this results in the multi-organ hypersensitivity in the patients. In this delayed hypersensitive reaction, we can observe few of the symptoms such as fever, rashes, facial swelling and we can also observe few of the severe conditions like hepatitis affecting the liver, nephritis affecting the renal system, myocarditis affecting the heart, even myositis, muscle, all these are going to be affected because of this delayed hypersensitive reaction. So whenever a hypersensitive reaction such as skin rash, fever are going to be developed after the use of phenytoin, immediately the drug should be stopped in case of multi-organ hypersensitive reactions. Similarly, phenytoin can produce few of the blood disorders like thrombocytopenia, the decreased thrombocyte count, agranulocytosis, decreased white blood cells, leukopenia, decreased leukocytes, and granulocytopenia, decreased granulocytes. All these levels are going to be reduced by phenytoin. So if any other drug which is going to produce the blood dyscrasias should be carefully given along with the phenytoin. Similarly, this drug can also produce hepatic injury and hepatic failure. It can induce the jaundice in the patients. It can also produce hepatomegaly, enlargement of the liver and increased transaminase enzymes like SGPT and SGOT. Even it can produce eosinophilia as a part of hypersensitive reactions.
So whenever this drug is going to be used for chronic time, there may be a chance of hepatic failure. So care should be taken. Similarly, another important effect of phenytoin is on the vitamin D. The vitamin D is going to be metabolized by the cytochrome P450 system. And here phenytoin acts as an enzyme inducer such that it is going to induce the metabolism of vitamin D. This results in the decreased levels of vitamin D which may result in the decreased bone density and increased bone fractures. So phenytoin can produce osteoporosis as well as osteopenia. Reduced bone mass can be observed in the patients when they are treated with the phenytoin. Another important precaution of phenytoin is that it can produce Stevens-Johnson syndrome, SJS. This is one of the fatal hypersensitive reaction. Within this syndrome, we can observe you have the hypersensitive reactions such as fever, red rash on the skin, some skin pain, sore throat, mouth ulcers, body pains, peeling of the skin and cough can be observed. So stevens johnson syndrome is one of the flu-like hypersensitive reaction that can be observed in the patients treated with the phenytoin. Similarly, this drug can also produce Ender syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, TEN. This is one of the severe form of the stevens johnson syndrome which also includes skin rashes, peeling of the skin, fever. Again, in such situations, the phenytoin should be carefully used. And these hypersensitive reactions can be observed within 28 days of the treatment with phenytoin. So within first month, care should be taken to check any hypersensitive reactions produced by phenytoin. And these hypersensitive reactions are more observed in the patients who are having the genotype with HLA-B1502. Even it is not completely associated with genotype, but the patients with this gene are having more risk to develop hypersensitive reactions towards phenytoin. Similarly, phenytoin can also reduce the insulin release, thereby it can increase the hyperglycemia. So in the diabetic patients, this may increase the glucose levels because of the reduced insulin release. And another important precaution is that phenytoin is teratogenic, so it can produce the, some malformations within the fetus. It can reduce the skull as well as facial development within the fetus. It can produce cognitive defects and breeding disorders in the newborns. Similarly, phenytoin can also increase the suicidal initiation and it can increase the depressive symptoms and even it can produce abnormal changes in the mood. So any of these abnormal changes in the mood as well as depressive symptoms are observed in the patients. The phenytoin use should be stopped and replaced with an alternative agent. And particularly these symptoms can be observed within one week of treatment of phenytoin. Similarly, when this drug is suddenly withdrawn, it can increase the seizure attack and it can induce status epilepticus. This is one of severe form of seizures which may lead to uninterrupted convulsions and patient may have confusion, syncope, muscle spasms and irregular breathing and this is a fatal condition. So the phenytoin should not be stopped suddenly. The dose of this drug should be tapered slowly in order to prevent increased risk of seizures in the patients. What are the side effects? The important side effects are mainly vertigo, ataxia, headache, nausea, nystagmus, crossed eye, and slurred speech in the patients. It can also produce some confusion, somnolence, even it is not producing the sedation, but it produces sleepiness in the patients. Incoordination, muscle incoordination can be observed. Hirsutism, unwanted hair growth is also observed with this use of phenytoin. Gum hyperplasia, this is another important side effect of phenytoin. Proliferation of the gums can be observed when this phenytoin is going to be prescribed and it can also produce megaloblastic anemia and sometimes folic acid supplements are required to counteract this megaloblastic anemia. How it is given? Phenytoin is available as a capsule as well as oral suspension. The suspension is available at a strength of 125 mg per 5 ml and capsule is available at 100 mg. The initial dose of the drug depends on the type of dosage form. The capsule is given at 100 mg thrice daily but the dose of the drug should be individualized based on the phenytoin levels within the body and this suspension is given as 5 ml thrice daily. This drug is also available as an IV solution but when this drug is given as 
IV infusion, the infusion rate should be very slow. It should be given at infusion rate less than 50 mg per minute. Since this drug is less water soluble, it can increase the infusion site reactions as well as other hypersensitive reactions. So the infusion should be given very slowly. In order to avoid the infusion site reactions, the phenytoin is going to be converted into its prodrug phosphenytoin. Phosphenytoin is the phosphate prodrug of phenytoin which is somewhat more water soluble. So it shows less infusion site reactions compared with the phenytoin. So that's about this phenytoin. Phenytoin is a anti-epileptic drug belonging to the hydantoin category. This drug acts by blocking of voltage gated sodium channels and it also increases the inactive state of the sodium channels such that they are not easily reactivated so that it can reduce the seizure attack in the patients. But this drug may produce severe hypersensitive reactions and multi-organ hypersensitivity. So if any symptoms such as fever, skin rash are observed in the patients within 28 days of the treatment, then it should be checked for multi-organ hypersensitivity and drug should be stopped and replaced with alternative drug in case of hypersensitive symptoms. It can also produce the blood disorders like agranulocytosis, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia. It can increase the glucose levels resulting in the hyperglycemia. It can produce hepatic failure resulting in the jaundice and elevated transaminase levels. And on the bone, it can reduce the bone density and increase the fractures resulting in the osteoporosis and osteopenia. And this drug can also produce stevens johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. In all these factors, precaution should be taken when this phenytoin is going to be prescribed. This drug produces few of the side effects like vertigo, nausea, nystagmus, headache, slurred speech, and some gum hyperplasia, hirsutism, and megaloblastic anemia as few of the important side effects. This drug is given at 100 mg thrice daily in the capsule form and as a suspension it is given as 5 ml thrice daily at a strength of 125 mg per 5 ml. This drug should be given at a slow infusion because of the infusion site reactions but better its product is available phosphenytoin which is having the less infusion site reactions because of the more water solubility. So that's about this drug. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.